That wagon has to be dead center. Make sure that's securely tied. Corporal, you'll find some more rope behind this skiff over here. Come on. Lively! There it is, Daniel. Food, medicine, and ammunition. The difference between survival and total annihilation for Fort Courtney. Well, with any luck at all, we ought to be there in three days, Major. Two days, Daniel. The fort can't possibly hold out more than another 48 hours. Major? The cargo's ready for loading, sir. Very good, Lieutenant. Proceed. Sir, there's one thing more. I'm uh, sure there's been some mistake, but your adjutant just told me that I am to share my command in this mission with some woodsman by the name of Daniel Boone. Uh, yeah, well, uh, we can discuss this later. Oh, no, Major, let him go ahead. He may have come up with some first-rate objection to that backwoodsman. Lieutenant Nolan was only recently transferred here from the east, Daniel. Considering our short notice and all, he was the one officer available who'd had experience with boats. Sir, from what I've gathered, this being a strictly military operation, You called him Daniel, sir? Yes. This is your backwoodsman. Glad to know you, Lieutenant. No offense personally, Mr. Boone. I'm glad to see that you appreciate the situation. Oh, I do. I was just wondering if I could be of help, if you'd mind having me along. Not bothering your command, of course. Well, I see no reason why not, since you put it that way. I'm sure you'll find the trip most interesting. Well, to tell you the truth, Lieutenant, I've made the trip before. Now, the Major tells me you only have two days to get there to prevent the fort from falling. Yes, Mr. Boone, that's true. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very pressed for time. Lieutenant, speed alone is not the answer. I'll show you what I mean. Here we are. Here's the fort. Now, the river narrows about here, with heights commanding the passage about here. Mr. Boone, I've seen a map of the river before. I've seen the river, Lieutenant. Now, the point is, if the British have thought to station troops anywhere along this river, and the way they block land routes, it's my guess they have. This is the point they most likely have picked, right above the suspension bridge. One degree correction. Fire when ready. Yes, sir. One degree correction. Fire! Perfect! Freeze that trajectory and we can't miss. Yes, sir. If anything comes up that river, it'll be blasted clear out of the water. <laughs> I only hope they do use a boat. With the gunpowder they'll be carrying, one shot would do it. The blast will be heard from here to Fort Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> if not by good King George. <laughs> about this expedition, Daniel, if you took those soldiers with you. Well, I'm not one to turn down help, Major, but unless they're Pullman, there's just no room on board. But suppose you do run into a British force somewhere along the way. 
Well, I don't suppose I could carry enough soldiers in that situation to do any good anyhow. I uh, suppose not, but uh, that young lieutenant. Oh, I think you'll be all right, Major. Just needs a little seeding, that's all. <laughs> Gentlemen, the Army needs five men to pull that flatboat upriver. Unload, free ride back downstream with the current. Three days in all. But I need very experienced polemen, because we've got to get there in a hurry. What's the rush, Sonny? Yeah, we ain't going nowhere. I'm not in a hurry. You in a hurry, Barnes? I don't see that that concerns you. Nobody pulls nothing on this river unless I say so. So where you're going, why, and how much concerns me plenty. Mm-hmm. Well, I would think that you men could use all the work you could get. <laughs> <laughs> That's so? Hmm. I'm still waiting for the answers, Sonny. With time running out, Lieutenant, I wouldn't think we could afford to be too choosy. Mr. Boone, I can't afford not to be. One man with character is worth three with none. It's amazing you found out so quickly. It's a matter of training, Mr. Boone. You take that man there, he could prove invaluable. He has leadership qualities, experience, spirit. He's pretty fair in the muscle, too. You. You. You're apparently the one to deal with. I'll need four men on the poles and one man on the sweep. In the first place, the name is Strunk. Mr. Strunk. <laughs> All right, Mr. Strunk. You'll do for the sweep. And I'll leave it to you to choose the four best men in this lot. Just like that. Where to? How much? I don't think we should tell him where we're... Fort Courtney. And $20 a man. Go soak your head, Lieutenant. We ain't gonna make a trip like that for no 20. Wait a minute, Strong. Why don't you speak for your... Oh! Now you make that 30, and we'll think about it. The lieutenant can't afford $30. He was just about to tell you that. Now, if any of you men are interested in this offer, I suggest you start loading those supplies on the flatboat. We'll be shoving off here shortly. Mr. Boone. Wait a minute. Now, Mr. Strunk, you wouldn't want to keep your shipmates from earning a good, honest dollar, would you? Well, I... I guess if it's for the Army, it's our patriotic duty. Toby, Parker, Barnes, George, let's go down the docks. Was there something, Lieutenant? Yes, Mr. Boone, a matter of authority. From now on, I'll handle these matters alone. If you prefer. Can we get this stuff loaded first? Fan out down there. You get that stuff over there. Here. Very efficient, mon ami. Very good. Just one more. Hey, what happened to Barker? So I go off down the street. Barnes, tell Barker to get down here on the double, or I'll have to replace him. It's all right. He's with me. Oh, he's with you. Yeah. Off, both of you. Excuse me, sir. Are you perhaps the uh, hire of a poor man for, for this boat? Nobody works here less than I say so. Now, get! Wait a minute. 
Go away. Strong. These two ain't part of my crew. Mr. Boone, if you please, I'll thank you to leave these matters to me. All right. Let's get one thing very clear and straight right now. If anybody is dissatisfied with money or conditions on this expedition, they can leave. No, 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 no. Very well. Finish securing the cargo and get to your polling positions. Strunk, you on the sweep. You and you pull on the port side. You and you on the starboard. All right, hop to it. Like I said, uh, a little seasoning. Mr. Boone. Thank you. I assure you, I am quite capable of handling these matters alone. Some matters you are, Lieutenant. Is there some question, sir, concerning my command? Not in my mind, but for the sake of this mission, you'll take Daniel Boone's advice and you'll abide by it. If that means splitting your command, then consider it split at my orders. Yes, sir. Hereafter, you will confine yourself to the operation of the boat, leaving all other concerns to him. Yes, sir. And in that connection, your boat appears to be ready. Yes, sir. Push, boys, come on! See you know your way around boats, Lieutenant. As the Major ordered, I'll perform my function and you will perform yours. I hope there'll be no difficulties between us. See the reason why there should be? I know a man's first command sometimes can be kind of a strain. The Major told you? This is your first? No, I just kind of figured that out. Pull the midstream, heave! You know, Lieutenant, one way to look at this might be that it's kind of a big opportunity. I do. And as long as we keep to our own divisions of responsibility, I won't be held liable for the mistakes of others. I see what you mean. Barker and Barnes? Uh, what is a Barker and Barnes, monsieur? Don't give me that. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. You clumsy fool, I'll break you in half. Would you perhaps enjoy a bit of sport, monsieur? This is an excellent weapon. Makes a good game, doesn't it? A game you want? Yes. Marbles, bumblebee peg. It's a boy's stick. It's a man's weapon. Mr. Strunk, what are you doing? Back on that sweep before we go ground. You're right.
No, no, no. Put those knives down. Get out. All right, Durkan. Now show him your specialty. I'll be delighted to. Seems you gentlemen don't hear commands too well. With the lieutenant's permission. I'm sure you all have good hearing for the clink of coins. And if there are any more shenanigans like this, those responsible are going to have their pay docked by half. And if you don't like it, you can always swim back. Right, now back to your post. You've cost us valuable time. Spirited men, Mr. Boone. It would be helpful if you could keep an eye on them. Bit early to be looking for the British, isn't it? Well, the British control all the territory along the river. One lookout anywhere along the river reporting our presence could mean the end of our mission. I knew it was a mistake to bring them to. It was a mistake for you, Strong. You'll be shown for the blowhard that you are. Listen to the braggart. He can't even buckle his shoes without the help of a sidekick. You better pay attention to your job, Strong. If we run into those logs down there, we'll all end up in the river. Strong, bring her alongside those logs. The log was blasted by a cannonball. Must have floated all the way down from Fort Courtney. Well, you're right about the cannonball, Legrand, but it didn't come from the guns at Fort Courtney. I'd say this cut hadn't been exposed to the water more than two hours. Meaning? Meaning that there's a cannon upriver from us. Most likely British, more likely commanding the river passage. Look here, Lieutenant. I'll show you what I mean, Lieutenant. We're about here. I'll cut across on foot and scout the suspension bridge. Then I'll hurry as quickly as I can and rejoin you about here. And if you're not at that point by the time we arrive, you expect me to wait? That's right, Lieutenant. Mr. Boone, I can't afford any delays. We can afford to be blown out of the water by British cannon even less. Now, listen, that part of this mission is my command, and my orders are to proceed as quickly as possible and without interruptions. I have orders, too, Lieutenant, and certainly one of them will be to prevent this from becoming a suicide mission. But what do you expect to gain? If there is a British cannon waiting for us, what can we do about it? We still have to try to push through. No, Mr. Boone, I'm sorry, I cannot. Now, Lieutenant, I don't know what, if anything, I can do until I have a look. Now, in the meantime, despite these buckskins, I think you ought to know I hold the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. I'm ordering you to wait at that curve of the river until I get there. Hold up on the pole! Carry on, Lieutenant. All hands! Start pulling. And from now on, you'll pick up your strokes. We've got a lot of delays to make up for.
Captain. I want you to double the sentries tonight. Yes, sir. And put a 24-hour watch on the bridge. It'll be a bright moon tonight. No chance of any boat getting past us if we're alert. Yes, sir. Sergeant, double all sentries tonight. Sir? Dismiss! Your poles, man. You can break out some food while you're waiting. About time. Jerky. Yeah. Seen you two around town before? Well, we're uh, we're just passing through. We we come from south of here. Peculiar place must be. All wear them bracelets around their ankles. How about you? You wear them too? When I think it's any of your business, I'll let you know. I won't say I've never seen any bracelets like them before. They're usually attached to chains. Of course, chains could be hacked off if need be. You know something? You do an awful lot of talking for a man that's so outnumbered. Lieutenant! What's the trouble, Mr. Strunk? How long are we going to have to sit here on this rotten scow? until I tell you to move it. All right, Strong. What are you after? What do you got? Nothing, probably. Except maybe a price on your head. Let's get off this thing. <laughs> Stand apart. Mr. Strunk, what is going on here? You got yourself a couple of escaped convicts, and I'm claiming the reward. Convicts? Yeah, right down to the ankle chains. Ah, Toby, bring me some rope. You're both under arrest. You'll be confined and turned over to the authorities of Port Courtney. Hmm, that would be very unfortunate. Very, but I have no other choice. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. Now stand back, the both of you. We are getting off here, mate. <laughs> First one that moves gets the charge. Fair enough. I'll see that you get this one. Now drop that pistol. Drop it. You drop that boat hook, too. Escaped criminals, Mr. Boone. If I hadn't been so bullheaded. It's lucky I got back when I did. We're gonna need all hands. You mean you intend to allow these two to continue on our expedition? Lieutenant, we don't have any choice. I'm gonna need their help. Their help? I found the British, a whole parcel of them camped out above that suspension bridge and the cannon. Grab two shovels, about 30 feet of that line, and a keg of powder. You two are going with me. Good riddance. These men are escaped convicts, Mr. Boone. Dangerous men. They'll try to kill you and escape the first chance they get. Yeah, I expect they will, but I'll just have to see that they don't get the chance. 
Why don't you swap with me? Your pistol will be handier for climbing. You have a plan? Sort of. This will leave you with only two pole men and Strunk, which means you'll be able to travel about half speed. I reckon you can get to the bridge about dawn. That ought to give me enough time to fix that cannon so it won't blow you out of the water when you're trying to run past. Monsieur Boone, uh, we are going uh, where? We're going to pay the Redcoats a visit. That's dangerous. I reckon it'll hold your interest. You cannot force us to go. That's right. I can chain you to the wagon. But if you come with me, you figure you'll have a chance to escape. So I reckon you'll come. Monsieur Boone, I am going to regret killing you. Your apology is appreciated. Now let's get started. Remember, if you come inside the bridge before dawn, hang back till the sun comes up. Then come by as fast as you can and don't stop for anything, no matter what. I can count on you, can't I? No matter what, Mr. Bone. My friends call me Daniel. They call me Bo. the way we're going to get there. And then we just blow it up with your powder, is that it? No, we'll just bury that keg in the edge of the cliffside under the cannon, light it with a fuse, or do you have a better idea? Huh? What I do know is we ain't never going to get there. All you have to do is look. Well, that's where our friend Legrand comes in. Me? Let me see that line. You see that tree on the ledge up there? Yes, I see it. How many shots is it going to take you to throw this boat hook over that limb? I know nothing about throwing uh, boat hooks. Well, I thought you said you were a master of all weapons. I am, but uh, this is not a weapon. Well, I figured you must have thought so the way you've been waving it around. Or did Strong have you all figured out just to break it? <laughs> you think I'm a child, huh? To be maneuvered by such uh, obvious tactics. Give that to me. I'll show you. First, start climbing. I'll tell you right now, nothing's going to come of it. I can tell you one thing's going to come of it. Before the night's over, you're going to be a pretty fair mountain climber. First chance I get, he's dead. You better be quick or I'll get him first. You can argue about that later, climb.
Here, make the barrel fast. about the waking of the Redcoats. <laughs> oh, it's a pity, isn't it? A pistol that cannot be used? Your gunpowder tossed to the winds and your time ticking away. It is that. I guess we better forget about trying to climb that cliff. Find a way to work our way past those sentries that have been posted. Without weapons and without powder, huh? Well, we just have to use some of their powder. I reckon they got plenty to spare. Well, you'll have to figure it out without me, since you cannot use the gun anyway. I can fire the gun all right. If I don't get your help, it won't matter whether I wake up the red coats or not. You know something, Boone? I'm beginning to admire you. You have a lot of spirit. Well, you have quite a bit of spirit yourself. Let's head up that slope. This is as far as we go. Toby, drop that anchor. What are we waiting for? Dawn, as Mr. Boone instructed. Then we go poling past that cannon in broad daylight? That's right, Mr. Strunk. Not with me on board. With everybody on board, Mr. Strunk. That's what you think. Get shot for nothing. We haven't a chance of getting that cannon. You see? The shots are coming from the garrison, all right, but they're not shooting at us. Let's keep going. What's the meaning of this? Who's firing? Caught him in the brush, sir. Keep your hands up. Serve you right if you had hit me, you blundering oafs. Man trying to do you a favor. Mind your speech, sir, and state your business. Or favor, as you call it. Well, fact is, it's a bit of both. Business for me, favor for you. But I'll do my talking to your officer in charge. You are talking to him. Which I could do a lot better not being treated like some low-down prisoner. Merci. Now, just what is it worth to you to find out something new about them supplies that are heading for Fort Courtney? Nothing. I'm ready to blast anything that comes up that river. Well, sure you are. Of course you are, but... Uh, it'd be nice for you to know just when they're coming and just how they plan to get by you in spite of your cannon. Hmm? 
I don't know what your information is worth, if anything, until I hear it. And you won't hear it until we've settled on a price. I figured that, oh, a um, hundred pounds in your currency, that'd be a fair price. Well, while you're making up your mind, he'll come in here and knock your cannon out. How? Uh, uh, uh. How do I know you're not lying? Because I can prove it just as soon as we agreed on price. Very well. You'll get your money. Good. Now, if you'll just take a look over the side, you'll see the powder that was meant to topple your cannon into the river. <laughs> Looks like a keg of powder, all right, sir. Splintered, but nothing else. All right. How many men? And where are they now? Well, there was two of them last time I saw them. But if the man in charge has his way, they'll disable your cannon before they bring the flatboat with supplies into range. Flatboat, yes. I'd anticipated something of that sort. You'll get your money when that boat is destroyed. You men, guard the approaches to this cannon and shoot anything that moves. Either we move out right now or I'm gonna take me a swim. Strunk, we move in no direction till sunup. You take one step for that side and I'll blow your brains out. The way you handle that seems more like a gun for Boone than for you. Mr. Strunk, once I pull this trigger, I doubt if you could tell the difference. Loaded and ready for firing. If they're coming at all, they should be here presently. Yes, sir. Break out the powder. powder is. How can we get there? What we need is another uniform.
If this is some kind of trick, sir, all you'll get is a bullet. First, the matter of setting off the explosion without including ourselves in the blast. Patience, Colonel, patience. She's got a stripe happy West Pointer for a captain. He'll get her here if he has to push her. <laughs> Isn't that thing loaded yet? Uh, loaded and ready, sir. for firing. Split in about 30 yards. He's just a boy. He's just a lad. He ain't worth three of us. As if you're still around to be counted now. Hey, look! It's the British cannon! in position. She'll be here any minute. The cam is pointed right at us! That doesn't mean it'll fire. Keep pulling, Toby. Get on with your work, Toby. Strong, move! in position.
Ready? Stand by. Colonel! They're here! No, no, you fools! Back to your cannon, no! Back to your post, the cannon, the cannon, do we hear you? Informer. And Legrand? Legrand? Well, I guess I locked him in the confusion. The important thing, Bo, is we're going to get those supplies to Fort Courtney on time, right? Right, Daniel. Voyage, gentlemen. <laughs> 